Hi, my name is Mark Davidson. I'm the Sustainability Officer with JewelX. So, so tell us about JewelX. JewelX is uh, a startup. Uh, it's an energy enterprise energy management company. Um, we do uh, the ability to uh, retrieve energy data from any IP connected device uh, in an enterprise, whether it's in the distributed office world or the data center or even the facility. So we can aggregate all that energy data wirelessly, remotely, without having to have agents or hardware meters to retrieve that data. Once we get that data, we can then slice it, dice it, carve it up and look at energy utilization. And we even have a policy mechanism so that we can uh, put various uh, policies in place to reduce the energy consumption, um, obviously trying to save our customers' energy use and, and obviously savings uh, in, in dollars. Okay, and uh, how long has the company been in business now? Yeah, we thought we started about uh, May of 2009 is when we officially started. Um, we came out um, and um, with our first version about one year ago this past year. Uh, we are now on version 2.5, and that's what we'll be demonstrating today um, is version 2.5, which is our one of our first data center releases of the product. Okay. Well, let's take a look. Uh, maybe we'll... Uh uh, while we take a look at uh, the software here, you can tell us what we're seeing. Sure. This is our, uh, we call it the Energy Manager Dashboard. The Dashboard is a web services, web-based application. Um, the application sits inside a corporate environment behind the firewall, uh, scanning the network for de IP connected devices and retrieving energy data from that in an automated way. Um, as you can see, the, the dashboard has various, uh, we call graphical widgets that you can use to display various types of energy data. Um, we can break data down in an almost infinite amount of ways. We could um, look at carbon emissions. So uh, in this case, I'm, I'm looking at Europe and my two data centers, Asia and the U.S., to see uh, what my current carbon emission rate, and we track all that data. I can look at my current power demand. Uh, various different ways. I can see how much energy or dollar savings um, my policies have had effect on. I can see what devices are on or off and all of these uh, dashboards can be fully customized by each user so I can create a sustainability version of a dashboard or I can create an IT centric version of a dashboard or even a, um, a I could even create a facility or a location specific dashboard for customers. Here's an example of, of looking at my data center locations. I, you can also see that I've even broken out my data center by rack so I could see how much energy each individual rack is drawing at any point in time. Um, so, I mean, you could really carve that data down. One of the other interesting things, because we retrieve energy data if I can get to scroll down, we retrieve energy data from all the IT and facility resources. We also have the ability to break that data out by business unit. Um, so we could take applications um, and attribute energy to an individual business unit since we know what servers uh, the business unit has, what uh, facilities the business unit has. Um, as well as the PCs and desktops and laptops, et cetera. All that data can be now aggregated, delivered to the customer um, by business units so they can now uh, finally know how much energy an individual business unit may be pulling inside of a company. Okay. I'm going to switch over now um, to one of the, I think, the strongest uh, capabilities of the product is its time to deploy. Um, in most cases, we can actually deploy our product with underneath a day, um, literally going in, installing it, and setting up what we call asset connectors. And you see some examples of asset connectors we support here. Um, in, in, we see a Microsoft Active Directory asset connector. We see a Cisco Works or a Cisco Call Manager asset connector, um, VMware 4.0 is an asset connector that we can import all of the virtual instances as well as the bare metal uh, servers that they're running on and re retrieve energy data on all that those devices. We have the ability to import data from any database. 
using uh, our database connector. Um, Excel or uh, comma delimited files we can import data from. Um, Cisco UCS is a new um, you know, data center centric uh, blade server that we can import data on as well. Um, Intel's data center manager and Cisco EnergyWise also is a, a, a new release that we're bringing out with that right. so we can import all of the switching and routing energy data uh, into the package just literally by adding these simple credentials and pointing to the uh, instance, all that data begins to flow into uh, JewelX almost instantaneously. So it's very quick to get value um, on that. Um, one of the things we also do is we track energy prices on an individual location by location basis as well as carbon emissions. Um, and these can also have triggers so they can actually go up or down based upon time of day triggers. Um, mm -hmm. So that's very important if you're doing carbon accounting um, or you've got multiple locations for your data centers obviously paying different prices. Um, but that's essentially how you set up the product. It's very, very quick to get the product up and running in most cases. Once that happens, you'll start to see data flowing in. And this is uh, an out-of-the-box installation with no customization. Uh, so what we're seeing here is data uh, pulled in and automatically categorized by stuff that we could retrieve across the network. So um, in this case, we're retrieving host um, operating system information directly from the devices that we're querying. Um, we automatically categorize all the different flavors of Linux and, and Windows and Windows Server, and that flows in, and uh, you can now look at energy usage by, by that. Or we can categorize it by whether they're servers or desktops or tablets. Okay. We can, uh, all this is automated. We categorize it automatically by make and model. So um, I can look at uh, uh, my HPs and I can see I've got some desktops out there as well as some ProLiant servers. Um, all that categorization data comes flowing in. Um, if I want to see how much energy my ProLiant servers are doing, I can simply uh, select the grouping and it will show me that all my ProLiant servers in my enterprise are pulling approximately 28 kilowatt hours of uh, energy. So it's uh, pretty easy to rotate the, the information. But let's say that I'm more concerned about my data center. I can obviously organize it by rack or multiple data centers. Um, I could see how much energy utilization the entire data center is pulling. This one's pulling 93, almost 94 kilowatt hours. I could break it out by the individual components in the data center, including storage, heating, and cooling, uh, lighting, if, if uh, that's available, um, and all the individual servers, switches, and routers um, in the data center. So uh, all this data uh, flows in in an automated way. You'll also see that we notify uh, automatically determined virtual instances on top of the bare metal servers. And through our VMware integration, we can even assign physical energy to virtual instances. So uh, obviously in a virtual world, you don't get a f the full amount of energy on the bare metal server on that virtual instance. It gets a fraction of the energy. But that's very important when you're trying to do business unit tracking of energy across the board. You need to know how much virtual servers are all also pulling in so I can automate that. Um, I can look at other locations as well. So maybe I've got a wiring closet or a rack in, in uh, London that I would like to look at. I can pull that in. So um, we're pulling in not only IT equipment, but we're also pulling in facilities equipment that are IP enabled. Um, if it's there, we'll be able to pull that energy information in and uh, overlay that as part of this entire um, application. We also have the ability to add some, you might want to call them bridges, to bridge, uh, protocol bridges, to bridge the legacy facilities protocol into IP so that we can retrieve that. Um, that obviously requires a little bit of effort. It's not quite as automated as uh, the rest of it is, but, uh, but it does work very nicely. Um, and one last thing I'll show are some of the uh, policy mechanisms. Um, you can see that uh, we have various types of policies. I could set location-based policy. I could set time-based policy. Um, I can um, 
do demand response policy, very interesting. Um, most of the time, demand response only means that I'm doing stuff at the facility. But because I now know how much energy each device is drawing, I can actually include IT devices as part of my demand response policies. Um, we also have the ability to do something we call load adaptive uh, computing. So in this case, I can dynamically migrate devices uh, based upon a uh, power threshold. So if my power threshold gets greater than, let's say, um, two or three hundred kilowatt hours, then I might be able to relocate it resources uh, using vMotion uh, from one data center to another data center or from one server to another. And all that becomes automated in the background. Okay. One last thing I would show is the reporting me mechanism. Um, you can see that I can literally do reports on uh, virtually any uh, type of energy data, whether it's cost savings, costs, uh, energy consumption, or carbon emissions. I brought up a sample carbon emission here um, that I'm breaking out um, energy uh, by rack in the data center. So you can actually see how um, energy and how, what the carbon emission ranks for each of that in the data center is. Um, so you can see that uh, rack five obviously is the uh, worst rack for carbon emissions. Uh, rack one, rack four would be the best rack. So you can immediately see maybe I need to go look how you know, uh, what's in rack one, maybe there's something going on. Um, you've got some instant feedback so that you can go pull that back and I can do trending and, and analysis and look at uh, energy data really as long as you want to keep it. Okay, well listen, uh, Mark, thanks so much for uh, walking us through this. If uh, folks are interested in learning more, uh, uh, is there, uh, what's your website so they can uh, find it? You can reach us at www.julex.net. Okay. Listen, thanks again for walking us through the product. Thank you very much for having me.